In this video, we're going to be talking about the truth about selling your music on royalty-free libraries. Now, what's the reality when you sell your music on royalty-free libraries like Pawn5 and Audio Jungle? Now, here's going to be very insightful for you if you're a newcomer to this, or if you're somebody that is thinking about joining uh, royalty-free libraries and start selling your music online. Now, for those of you who are already experienced, you can leave in the comment section what's your take on this and share your experience as well. So here we go. Well, this is going to be like a reality check for you, okay? So truth number one, the takings that you are making and the sales are always going to vary. There's no such a thing as a one-time payment or one uh, income uh, level, if you will, meaning that you can earn anything between $2 all the way to $150 or more, depending on the license. So even though you can uh, price your music on certain libraries like Audio Jungle and Pond5, there's other libraries where you do not have that freedom of pricing your own music and takings could be very, very low. However, these takings do uh, add up over time. And uh, uh, it's just libraries that it just, it, there's nothing you can do about it, but all you can control is really the amount of music that you put in your catalog and in different libraries. Now, if you're non-exclusive, that means that you're gonna have the same music track in different libraries at different price points and you're gonna be making uh, different uh, revenue from that same music track. Now, for example, on Pond5, I price my music tracks around $47, $97. All of my music tracks, all of my edits are the same price. And on places like uh, Melody Loops, I cannot price my music, and that same music track could be selling for $4. Now, that's the nature of this business. There's nothing you can do about that. But the takings are always gonna change. The takings are always gonna vary. They're gonna go up and down. It depends as well on the license. If you're selling a big license, those takings are gonna be much higher, okay? So on Audio Jungle, there are uh, different licenses that the client or the customer can purchase, and your income is gonna be depending on that. It's gonna really depends on what type of license they're uh, buying your music. So they're allowed to use that music track depending on the audience depending on the license so uh, these licenses can vary from a, a single use or, or a standard license if you will and you have control of pricing your tracks there but at the same time you have control of pricing the higher licenses which uh, allows the customer or the client to use these music tracks in different projects now here's what my friend Frank uh, had to say he was answering a question, well, not a question, pretty much a statement on one of my latest videos about uh, joining Envato Elements and uh, how much takings can you have. And uh, he shares some of his uh, takings, if you will. And, and my friend Frank is really proactive. He's uh, really a very busy and successful composer. I'm always uh, talking about him. We keep in touch on a regular basis uh, when it comes down to all of these things uh, concerning music licensing. And I really appreciate it because I don't have to not only share my takings or share an example of what I make, uh, so you can have an idea what to expect, but you can check as well what other composers are doing. Now, truth number two is that it's free, okay? So you don't have to pay anything. You don't have to pay anything to submit your music. You don't have to pay to become uh, a contributor in Pond5 or Audio Jungle. And that's a good thing. It's the same with YouTube. You don't have to pay to be a YouTuber or do what I'm doing right now. The platform is there. It's free of charge. All I have to do is have an account and start uploading my music or start uploading my, in this case, my videos. And it's the same with uh, royalty-free libraries. That's why it's so easy to start uh, selling your music because you don't have to spend much money. Okay, the only thing you have to spend money is on your gear, your computer, your, your softwares, and, and hopefully you already have that. You just need to know how to get your music in the marketplace. Now, there are uh, different libraries who do require you to pay uh, some kind of fee in order to get pitched some kind of uh, briefs, if you will, and, and leads so you can submit your music. So there's places like, uh, like Taxi. Uh, I know people that are involved in Taxi and they get uh, on a monthly basis or whenever there is a job uh, uh, that they require music for a particular uh, project, you can participate and you can submit your music. And uh, it's almost like uh, they're just offering you the job. They're just giving you the leads of what people need, uh, networks and uh, music supervisors and whatnot. When it comes down to royalty-free libraries, it's, it's literally free. So you can join for free. You don't have to pay in order to start uploading your music or in order for you to start earning 
money with your music. Obviously, the libraries, they make money when you sell your music, so they take a, a share of it. This changes if you're exclusive or non-exclusive, but that's the way they make money. It's the same with YouTube. The way that YouTube makes money is when you see ads on YouTube, they get a little, they get a share of it, and I get a little bit of that as well. And that's the nature of, of free things. <laughs> Somebody has to make money somehow, okay? You wouldn't go to work at your day job for free, all right? You're being paid for for your job, for your day job. So just I want you to snap out of that uh, limited belief and that uh, scarcity mentality or, or, or that thing that is just because uh, you're getting very little money or just because they are taking you uh, 40% of your revenue or 35% you're only taking in your pocket 35% of the sale that is a bad thing it's very little yes but I have shared many times that that's the nature of it all everything when it comes down to royalties is very very little but you could have a big big royalty uh, payment depending on the license and depending on the use okay and the truth number three is that it's truly passive income I have music here that I haven't uh, that I made that years ago and it's still selling okay you need to have a lot of music on your catalog in order to see the benefits and see the snowball effect okay if you only have 10 tracks or 100 tracks it's not enough you need to be uploading on a regular basis for a long period of time in order to, to for this to take effect and when I say passive income passive income is when I am doing this video and I'm still making sales that's the true meaning of passive income I'm not actively doing something in order to get paid this has been done two three years ago and even longer and I still get paid that's the definition now in order for for you to maximize this you need to be on multiple libraries and be uh, really active on all of them for a sustainable amount of time in order for this to take effect it is possible to start making passive income because what you start doing is that once you start growing your portfolio you could be doing other things like composing more music which is what <laughs> the way I live my life or doing another YouTube video but the, the music that you have already done that has been selling on its own online I don't have to physically uh, sell the music to the client okay I don't have to really say hey here's the music track that I did today can you please buy it or somebody's actually paying for that as I'm, there's no exchange the music has been done already it's been done in the past so whatever I'm gonna do today it's gonna contribute for my future takings in some way of a passive uh, uh, format if you will so that's the true meaning of passive income and it's very hard for us to to really acknowledge this or to really know what this means because if you're a musician that first you're a teacher you're a music teacher you go and you get paid by doing guitar lessons or piano lessons or whatever okay if you're doing gigs like I was back in the day you will usually just get paid you show up you do your gig and you get paid you know it's very okay depends on the time that you put in there and it has a, a fee for that when it comes down to music licensing I can just make that work once I compose that music track once and then that music track I upload it to multiple libraries and I get paid in different ways while I'm doing something else like chilling out with my family or usually I'm working so passive income has a little bit of a bad aftertaste for a lot of people because uh, you have this idea that is somebody by the beach drinking some piña colada and uh, working on a laptop okay I totally understand that because I've been there but uh, un until you experience that for yourself you will see that there's a positive side to passive income and actually you want to get into that world of passive income especially as a musician especially as a composer because you could be doing something else I have many of uh, my friends that are composers that they do other things as well and they still have this thing running in the background they're, they're teachers they're playing in bands and they are still supplementing their income in different ways but this is still giving them uh, a big revenue okay and they once you see the potential it's hard to go back it's hard to say I don't want to do this anymore because you have seen the opportunity you have tasted a little bit of it and you wonder how much more can that grow and how much better you can become as a composer so anyways these are just uh, three simple truths and it's like a reality check uh, there are obviously some uh, negative sides to it like for example hard work dedication and persistence 
but that should be understandable. It's like if you're gonna do workouts, you wanna lose weight or you wanna gain some muscle weight, it's understandable that you're gonna go through some pains and it's gonna hurt and it's not gonna be easy and it's up to you to put in the work. It's up to you to have the willpower to make this happen. So hopefully this video has been helpful to you. Let me know in the comment sections uh, what's the biggest struggle you have when it comes down to making sales in royalty-free libraries, okay? And if you're new to music licensing or to royalty-free libraries, download my free guide, link in the description. And I hope this video finds you well. As always, rock and roll, and here's to your success. <music>